back cover, our goal isn't to persuade anyone to cut animal products from their diet. Instead, our goal is to engage with vegetarianism from a Christian worldview. That we approach the topic as Christians does not suppose that the dietary decisions that followers of Christ make are crucial to a life of faith. In the Old Testament, God forbade his people Israel from eating particular foods in order that they may be set apart from the other nations. However, Christ came when the old law passed away in favor of a new redemptive way of reigning with and to God. The vision that Peter received with the sheet from heaven filled with various four-footed animals alongside reptiles and birds stands out as the turning point for the church with regards to civil and ceremonial Jewish law on clean food. A voice called him to kill and eat, and to Peter's protests about having never let any unclean food pass through his mouth in his life, the voice declared that man should not call unclean what the Lord has made clean. One of the key lessons from this moment is that the church should not be divided on issues of food. As Paul expressed in his letter to the Romans, For the kingdom of God is not of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Earlier in the letter, Paul admonished that one person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another, whose faith is weak, eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them both. Ray C. Stedman, an evangelical pastor who passed away in 1992, published a good breakdown of these first few verses of Romans 14. The article is linked in the description. COVID does not hold eating meat or other animal products as inherent in evil, and we don't exist to convince you that one way or another is better. Statistics and stories we share are intended to provide information rather than to preach morality. A writer at Medium described the choice to or to not eat meat as a matter of personal choice and conviction rather than of gospel. Depending on where you stand, this vegetarian omnivore debate may or may not be a moral issue. Certainly, it can at least involve moral issues such as humane treatment of animals and responsible stewardship of the environment. Either way, Koba's aim is not to guilt a meat eater into completely replacing their chicken with tofu or the beef with seitan. Our aim is to create a conversation. Whether as a result you decide to eat chickpea noodle soup instead of chicken noodle soup or not, you're still welcome at the table.